These are the words that I have personally picked out for you to learn. I think they're brilliant words and very few of them appear in other word lists, including my own. Starting with bristle, usually followed by at, to bristle at something, to react angrily or defensively. Some on Wall Street bristle at the idea of these pesky, chaotic groups of people, hooligans, pushing stocks around. They bristle at that idea. They react angrily to. They're defensive about, no, don't let this happen. They're bristling at that suggestion. Next word. Brittle. Multiple meanings. Essentially, easily broken, cracked or snapped. Like clay is quite brittle. You can snap it apart. But also, more metaphorically, easily disrupted, overthrown or damaged, frail. A brittle voice Sounds like easily cracked, easily interrupted, easily broken. So you've got the literal sense and the metaphorical sense. The book's ancient pages were so brittle, he feared they would crumble before he finished. That's the literal sense. By the tension between the two, their alliance was brittle at best. That's the metaphorical sense. The alliance was brittle. It might be broken, disrupted overthrown at any point. It was frail, brittle. To brooch. Obviously you know about a brooch. Often women wear them on their lapels or in their collars or whatever as a fashion statement. I don't know too much about brooches and also it can be spelled with two O's. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about broaching a subject. Often a difficult subject. She didn't want to mention it, but she felt she had to broach the subject, to open it up for discussion to broach a difficult issue. The best way for agents to broach difficult subjects or have hard conversations regarding expectations with clients is to be direct, clear, and transparent. That's a good way to broach the issue, to open up, to break the ice. I think that's the origin of the word, actually. To break something up using a device is to broach it. And in a sense, you're breaking the ice on this topic by broaching it. To browbeat, to intimidate or disconcert by a stern manner or arrogant speech. Or in simpler words, to bully, to cajole someone into doing something. Almost like you're physically beating their brow, their forehead. You're intimidating them to doing what you want. Obviously, much more often with words rather than physical actions. You're browbeating someone. You think you know best. And so you're going to intimidate or bully someone into doing what you want. And there were people like Malcolm who browbeat kids into adopting extremist beliefs, bullying them into doing what they want, to browbeat them. Brusque, a lovely word. Markedly short and abrupt. Or blunt in manner and speech, often to the point of ungraciousness, rudeness, being harsh, What a brusque reply that was. Why did you have to be so brusque in your email? Only using four words to reply to her long essay. That's kind of rude, you know. She asked for a cup of coffee and received a brusque reply. We don't have any. Sharp, harsh, bordering on rudeness, bluntness. Brusque. Buffoonery. We're seeing a lot of this these days in the world. Foolish or playful behaviour or practice. Acting like a buffoon, like a clown, an idiot, someone who's clumsy, awkward, foolish, idiotic. The film is full of wordplay and buffoonery. Wordplay is like puns on words, innuendos. And buffoonery, foolish behaviour. It used to mean more so playful and fun, And it can still mean that, like a clown, but more often we're talking about someone being an idiot, a moron, a fool, a buffoon, and their practice of buffoonery. That's what they do. A bulwark. I know you might think of pronouncing it as bulwark, but it's bulwark. Bulwark. A strong support or protection. She was a bulwark against the encroaching enemy. A support, a protection against. He is a bulwark at this company. He holds it together. Democratic principles stand as a bulwark against tyranny, a defence, a support, 
of democratic principles, a support that stands in the way, a bulwark. Obviously, it can also be physical, something that protects a wall of a fortress, for example, a bulwark. Bontress, very interesting word. Presumptuously, like assumingly, irritatingly self-assertive. Arrogant, swaggering. Believing in themselves so much that it's actually irritating and frustrating to see. And kind of over the top, arrogant, presumptuous, almost assuming that they're better, that they know best. He was an impossibly bumptuous and opinionated buffoon. Arrogant, swaggering, self-assertive, self-important. Donald Trump's bumptuous, boisterous, blustering performance in his face-to-face debate with Joe Biden changed the trajectory of the presidential race. So each of those words means something slightly different, actually. Blustering, you're exaggerating too much. Boisterous, full of energy, a bit too much energy. And bumptious, we have here, full of self-importance, arrogance, swaggering around, like striding around in a pompous way, to the point that it almost irritates the audience. Bumptious. Great word to pronounce, actually. You can try it at home. Bumptious. And the next word is to bungle. Funny word. To mishandle something, to awkwardly mismanage. He was given tremendous responsibility as manager, but he bungled it completely. Mishandled it, got it wrong, made a farce out of it, a debacle. Awkward, clumsy, bungling attempt. He bungled his first attempt to manage a group of professional players. Got it wrong completely, almost in a humorous way. Buoyant, cheerful and optimistic. You may, of course, know that the word buoyant also means something that floats to the surface, as in you swim and your body is buoyant. It doesn't drown. It doesn't sink down. It stays up on the surface. That's to be buoyant. And you might know that buoy, B-U-O-Y, is something they use in the sea that keeps you afloat and marks out territory. But did you know that buoyant can also be about an attitude? If you're cheerful and always looking on the bright side, it fits, right? A buoyant person in a pool always floats up and a buoyant attitude is you're always looking on the upside. You're optimistic, you're positive, you're buoyant. Some fans found the song to be a buoyant departure from Lord's last album release, Melodrama. A buoyant departure in this sense would be something that was different from what she did before. It was a departure. So maybe her last album was pessimistic and a bit down whereas this one is buoyant, cheerful. Bureaucracy. There's two meanings here. The literal one is an entire form of government, like a democracy or a bureaucracy. And in a bureaucracy, all the people with the power are the officials, the mandarins, the people appointed their positions, the civil service, the ones behind the scenes, the unelected people. They have all the power, not the elected representatives. So you try to make change in a system as a new president or a new prime minister, but you can't change anything because there's too much bureaucracy, too much power in the hands of unelected people who administer things. But there's the more metaphorical sense of she had to handle so much bureaucracy, excessively complicated procedure and administrative efforts. For example, have you ever tried to fill out a form for a passport and a visa and just found that it had 20 pages or 50 pages? You would call that bureaucracy. It's so complicated. It's too complicated. Or maybe you wanted to start a new business in your region and you had to fill out duplicate forms and submit online questionnaires, etc. That you could describe as bureaucracy. You're not necessarily talking about a government. You're just talking about an excessively complicated, complex procedure. So two meanings to the word. It's a very common word. Dean's patience with bureaucracy was thin during the best of times. He had little patience. But dealing with the various branches of social services over the past winter stretched and frazzled, burnt out his tolerance to the limit. Too much. It's a very common complaint among small businesses that there's too much bureaucracy. To bustle. A much more fun word than bureaucracy, to move in an energetic and busy manner. People were clutching their clipboards, bustling about. 
To clutch means to hold on tightly. Have you seen those people in like a building, a business environment, an office, and they're holding their clipboards, like rushing around, not running, but like walking quickly. They're bustling about. They've got energy and they're busy, almost showing off how busy they are by like walking really, really fast and bustling about. Or there's the idiom, the hustle and bustle. Hustle, people trying to drive up business and the bustle, they're moving about in a busy way. Easy to remember because the first three letters are the same as busy, bustle. He enjoyed the hustle and bustle of the metropolis. That idiom, hustle and bustle, the movement, the energy, the excitement, the plethora of different businesses and opportunities, the hustle and bustle of the city, such as a city like London. But it can be something simpler. The auntie bustled about the kitchen, getting the dinner ready. A cabal, a secret political clique or faction. A group of people may be trying to hide away from government eyes. A cabal of dissidents threaten the government. Dissidents are people who disagree with the prevailing view or the government official orthodox view. Think of it as a secret cabinet of people, a group that's in hiding that has some degree of power. That would be a cabal. They don't have to be dissidents. The government might be run by a cabal, a secret political grouping. Some people view royal families as a cabal, like they hope that the government is in charge, but actually the country is being run by a cabal, by the royal family. It doesn't have to be royalty. Any secret group that has power in government or outside is a cabal. Cadaverous. A cadaver is a corpse. So you might think cadaverous means to be like a corpse, and it does. To be very pale, thin or bony, skeletal, like a corpse. You don't have to be dead necessarily, but maybe you look like you're almost dead. You almost look like a cadaver, a corpse, to be cadaverous. He was gaunt and cadaverous after his long fast. Not an ideal look, to be honest. To cajole someone. To persuade someone to do something by sustained coaxing flattery. You're really trying to persuade them to do something and you're using all the tools in your arsenal to get it done. Maybe by threatening a little bit, maybe by flattering them and saying they're amazing and it would make them look so good. Either way, you're seriously trying to get them to do something. You're cajoling them into doing it. The realtor, outside of America known as an estate agent, hoped to cajole her into selling the house, using any tactic he could think of to clinch the sale, to cajole someone. To be callous. A lot of negative words in a row here, but hope you don't mind. To be callous means showing or having an insensitive and cruel disregard for others. To be uncaring in a situation where most people would care and have sympathy, but you're callous. His callous comments about the tragedy made me shiver. It's a rather stern word to end on today, but it's a very common word. And you definitely don't want to be callous in life being uncaring and insensitive towards others. I'm sure none of my students who are watching this video would be callous themselves to have cruel disregard for others and not caring about the impact of your words or actions. I'm sure you are all far more empathetic than that. Thank you for reaching the end of the video. Do let me know if you learn any new words.